Well, hello, 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 and welcome to another episode of The Life with Naz. An hour of laughter and encouragement coming to you from Corona, California. I am comedian Nazareth. That's where the Naz comes from. Just to make sure you guys are aware of that. Live, which means live, like as we speak. Well, you're probably a minute behind, so it's not really live. No, it is live. With means alongside of, and Naz, which is short for Nazareth. So, just so you know where we at, where we stand here. And uh, it's good to see all of you. Uh, okay, I'm trying to uh, see if this, let's see if we can bring people from the other side to join us. Hello, people from the other side. Welcome. Let's see. We are. Okay, hope you guys had a great weekend. Okay, let's see. People from the other side. No, 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 no. Oh, stop it, stop it, stop it. I don't want to. Okay, I I don't want that. Okay, here we go. Okay. You're now interacting as Nazareth. And I'm interacting as Nazareth with you guys right now. Oh, stop it. Come on. Come on, Facebook, please. Be nice, be nice. Be nice, Facebook. Here we go. Okay, good. Okay, stop. Okay, here we go. Let's see who is joining us today. All right, good, good, good. We have Sarah. Hello, Sarah. Come on, everyone. Uh, come on, people. Happy birthday to me. Oh, that's right. Happy birthday to our Sarah. Happy birthday. All right, happy birthday. Rochelle is here. Hello, Rochelle. And let's see, Becky Voss, the mother of the birthday girl. And Catherine Allen, how are you? Becky Ottenberry, good to see you guys. Sarah and Lily, 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 it's always good to see Lily here. Okay, guys, I have to drink my Turkish coffee because I've been working most of the afternoon with an electrician, working, doing, put some fans and some lights in my house. So... Mm. It's been a long day for me, and the change of the clock. Uh, Michael Ramirez has to climb the Trump wall to get to the other side. Welcome to the country, brother. I uh, hope everyone's adjusting to the time change. Yeah, I think that's what it is, why I'm tired. But I'm not really tired, but I mean, I worked a lot today with the hanging lights and putting the fan and all that, so that's why. Uh, I love the happy birthday track. Thank you. Thank you. Debbie Malone, how are you? Michael Ramirez, Rochelle, I had coffee late today too. Hope I can get to sleep by 10 p.m. I think you will because it's probably going to be 11 p.m. Still, your body thinks it's 11, so you'll sleep. I've not had chocolate to stay awake today. I'm not eating any sugar, people. This is one week, no sugar, no carbs. And um, I'm still standing. <laughs> so this is good. Tomorrow, people, on the podcast, my guest will be John Lupo. John Lupo is a very interesting man. He's a new friend. I've known him for a couple of years. He's the manager of uh, Daryl Strawberry. If you know anything about baseball, Daryl Strawberry, Strawberry was one of the great baseball players, and he was his manager. Daryl is a believer in Christ after years of drugs and abuse. He became a believer in Christ. And John Lupo is a, he's a Wall Street guy. He's from the Bronx. He worked alongside the mafia. Very interesting stories about his life. So tomorrow will be storytelling, story hearing. And you can talk to him about uh, Wall Street. You can talk to him about mafia. You can talk to him about baseball, Daryl Strawberry, you whatever you want to do, you can talk to him about it. So tomorrow he'll be here. Uh, we should have a federal holiday for daylight saving. We should, but they always do it on a Saturday. My dad came from north legally, legally, from the north. It looks more like you're sitting, Naz, not standing. I'm still, <laughs> I've met Daryl a couple times. That's awesome. Sounds like an interest. Yeah, it'll be an interesting podcast. Okay. You guys know that I always let you know uh, when I write something new, 
you guys get the first draft, the new, without editing, without anything. But today it's, it's venting. I don't know why I'm, I'll tell you why I'm venting. Today I, I open my phone and I see a charge for $120. She said, thank you for renewing your membership to PDF Filer. I'm like, what is this PDF Filer? I look at it. Two years ago, a comedian that I hired, Twitter show, would send her contract. She signed it to you using PDF filer. So I get a copy. To open the copy, they said if you use our service and you don't cancel within seven days, we're going to charge you $120 a year. I didn't know about it. I didn't read the fine print. So they charged me last year. And they charged me again yesterday, today. So I called him and the guy, I'm sorry, he had an Indian accent. So I, I know it wasn't, the company wasn't in the U.S. I'm sorry. This is nothing racist or anything. He could be from Sri Lanka. He could be from Kashmir. He could be from Pakistan. He could be from India. He could be from uh, Bangladesh. He could be from, I'm just saying, the Southeast Asian accent. And... So he goes, oh, I'm sorry, you signed up for it. I said, no, I did not sign up. He said, you should have read the fine print. Really? You know what? I don't think we should do business with anybody who gives you a fine print. What if, you know, it's just sad. Why do we live in a world if you forget to cancel in 30 days, we charge you and continue to charge you? You know, are they, are they scamming companies punishing us for, for having bad memory? So because you have a bad memory, you're going to be punished and charged because you forgot to cancel your subscription that you probably didn't know about. So that means people who have good memory should make more money than people with bad memory because people with bad memory will end up paying charges for things they forgot to cancel. But then again, would you rather have bad memory and be charged by those scammers or good memory and remember all the horrible things you've done in the past and you start, you know, marinating on those thoughts. I don't know. I'd rather pay the fees. Uh, you know, that's, everybody is punishing us for not re remembering. The, our banks charge us late fees. Our credit cards charge us late fees. They're all, they all do that because they're like, hey, you don't have good memory. We're going to punish you for right. The only people who really... You know, if you have a great memory, the only people who are really appreciate that is people who are not really your friends, but you remember their birthday. Because if you're friends and loved ones, of course, you have to remember their birthday. It's not, I mean, they'll get mad if you forget. Your wife will punish you if you forget. Your spouse will punish you if you forget their birthday, their Valentine's, or other things that they told you to do. But to get these banks and strange companies charging you, you know, Punishing you because you forgot? I don't know. Anyway, so who came up with this fine print? I think it's an optometrist, a guy, a gla you know, an eye doctor who said, oh, let's put stuff in fine prints so that their eyes get messed up and we can, we can do that. I, I mean, what is, I'm sorry, what is this? Like, if you don't, we're going to offer you a service you don't want, or maybe you need it once, but if you don't cancel, we're going to charge you. What if you marry someone and you have a child and then you, you break up, but they forget to sign the divorce papers and she keeps having children and keeps charging you for the child support and you go, well, what happened? I just, oh, you didn't read the fine print, buddy. I mean, you think, you think uh, Honest Abe, Abraham Lincoln, Honest Abe had fine prints and whatever, like, uh, I don't know, I'm just, I'm, I'm just babbling here. Can you imagine the Ten Commandments of God gave us the Ten Commandments that he put, ten, you know, fine prints on that? The, the, you know, like, honor your father and mother. Unless your father is the deadbeat dad and your mother used Similac instead of breast milk. I don't know. Thou shalt not murder, except if you live in New York. Thou shalt not steal, unless... Yeah, thou shalt not steal anything over $950 in California because under that you're okay. I don't know. I'm just venting. Anyway, back to life. You're cracking me up, Ness. I love this when I'm cracking you up. That means there's good stuff in there. 
And Becky Ottenberry is laughing. I love Becky and Sarah. They are my my fans with the new material. Hello from Highland. Amy, welcome. She's off tonight. Good. Thank you for joining us. Punishing us or just being greedy and taking advantage. It is. They're greedy. Frank, how are you? All right. Naz, will you there on... We will be here on St. Patrick's Day this coming Thursday. We understand celebrated with your family. I don't celebrate St. Patrick's Day. I'm sorry, even though I am Irish. This is what happened, people. Wednesday night, Maha's sisters are coming from Canada and Baltimore. So those sisters are going to be coming. Wednesday night, I will have the show. Even though I have a men's Bible study, I will do the show Wednesday. Thursday... I think they have plans somewhere, so I will do the show. Friday, I'm not sure. So I have to, to, to be nice to Maha because she will, if I tell her, no, I can't go with you guys, I can't take you because I have a show, I know she would say, okay, do your show, but I understand how she, I want to make sure I'm there for her, to cater for her. But so far, it looks like I'm going to be here every single day this week. I don't have shows, but I'll do the shows here. Yeah, so far, if anything happens, I'll let you know. But, nah, okay, uh, let's see who else is here that needs to, all right, last, hmm, is that called a prenup? <laughs> Nancy Matriata, how are you? I sent you to ask you where your address is, because I got lost, I mean, I, I saw something about your address, but then I couldn't find it, and I thought you live in Corona, but I think you live in Pomona, which is 45 minutes away, and on Saturday, Maha needed me to do some stuff, so I could not, I could not go. Lisa Hoffman, a casket, a casket. Yes, let's talk about the casket. I'll tell you why we're talking about the casket. The other night after I got home. Okay, here we go. Just update us as you need it. Okay, now I think you're ten percent. I am. Okay, here's the last. Friday, I asked you, give me the worst name for a funeral home. Worst name for a funeral home. At number 20, Dead Bones. At number 19, Highway to Hell. At number 18, Another One Bites the Dust. At number 17, Worst Name for a Funeral Home, Quiet Zone. At 16, Grounded for Life Funeral Home. Number 15, Stiffers Funeral Home. At 14, High Occupancy Caskets Funeral Home. At number 13, Dirt Bags Are Us. At number 12, Ghostbusters. At number 11, Cremation Creation. At number 10, Top 10 Worst Names for a Funeral Home. At number 10, Ashes and Dust. Mike Ramirez. At number 9, Stoned. At number 8, Funeral Services and Taxidermy. At number 7, Knocking on Heaven's Door. At number six, return to sender funeral home. <laughs> At number five, last stop funeral home. At number four, sticks and headstones instead of sticks and stones. At number three, down under. That's the perfect name for a funeral home. At number two, you stab him, we slap him. And the number one worst name for a funeral home, holy smokes crematorium. Holy smokes, crematorium. Good job. All right. And, of course, my favorite is mine, which won't be qualified to be in the top 20. It's called, you know, Smart and Final. But that's a good name, not a bad name. All right. It is 8.45. It's time to hydrate whatever you want to drink, coffee, water, and share. All 81 people, please hydrate and share. Delilah, shut up. This dog has been barking all day. You had me at goodbye. Didn't make it. Oh, yeah, I didn't see it. Didn't come up. Sometimes they disappear. I have Irish ancestry too. I don't have to wear green because of that. Oh, if you're Irish, you don't wear green. I didn't know that. I forgive you. My daughter lives in Corona on Hedges. Yes, I live in Pomona. Okay, yeah, I couldn't make it anyway to Pomona. I was going to squeeze by uh, at 8.30 in the morning with my dog, and I thought you live by 900 by the airport, by the, what do you call it, by the Corona airport, the little airport. I have a suggestion for a question. Bad songs to sing at a wedding. Okay. 
What's his name does that? Uh, Tim Hawkins does a whole bit on that. Mark Mund, welcome back. Does being a clean comedian means you bathe before going on stage? Of course. I do. Uh, I take a sponge bath actually when I uh, when I'm before the show. <laughs> Luke is here. How are you, Luke? How's your uncle or family? Nice box, Nas. Does it fit? <laughs> I'm pretty white. I'm sure I got some Irish blood. I pro maybe Scottish. I don't know. Suzanne is here. Suzanne made it to number four. Sticks and headstones. Hey guys, I'm too tired to stay up and watch the whole show. Sorry. Good night, everyone. All right, do what I do. Drink some Turkish coffee. Okay, guys, I told you today I've been working with an electrician. It's a great guy. I met him on the plane. You know, drove him home. I've uh, been trying, you know, encouraging him. It's a great guy. He came in and did some work for me. He's just a perfectionist. So we took a, a while. But give me the worst name for an electrical company. Worst name for an electrical company. Come on, people. Worst. What's the worst name for an electrical company? The worst. What's the worst name for an electrical company? Let me uh, copy the question for you. Copy the question for you. Here we go. Here we go, Niaz. Okay. Here's. And let's spin it for you so you can. Okay. Uh, the sale was. Oh, the sale was in Corona near the airport. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, I send you the thing, the Facebook question. Where you, where's the address? But nobody cared. Naz, do you want camels to be your pallbearers when it's your turn? I'm not that heavy. 36 Irish here for Debbie Malone. Hey, Naz, from Cheese Curds, Wisconsin. Welcome, Matthew. Hey, all right. Let's see. My uncle passed away, unfortunately. I'm so sorry, Luke. We prayed for him, so... Mm. Okay, let's see. You use duck when take a bath? Ducky, oh, my rubber ducky, of course. Lights out. <laughs> I can't believe I got number two. You did. Yeah. What's the worst name for an electrical company? Burn it down electrical. Intermittent power. <laughs> All tased up. No dime, no shine. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, so very sorry to hear. Yes, I know. Shockers. Our prices will electrify you. Shorts. <laughs> Power's out. Hey, Joey. Welcome. How are you? Electric shock company. Good one, Amy. Zapped. <laughs> Blackout. <laughs> ah, Jolty McJolt. <laughs> Jolty McJolt. Found out my family had Irish blood after 23 and my DNA test. Jen is very Irish. Hey, I'll drink to that. No, I'm just kidding. Blackouts are us. Sorry, I didn't get back to you, Nez. Been extremely busy today and was home alone with three kids and half the day. Oh, it's okay. It's okay. I just want to have you on the podcast one Tuesday where you're available to take questions too. So you let me know what Tuesday you're available, you have off, and I will make it happen. Sparky, defibrillator. Good one, Suzanne. See, drink some coffee, stay up with us, okay? The shock of your life. Almost certified electric. <laughs> Electrifying. Tased. <laughs> Tased and confused. <laughs> electric storm. I just did... Uh, Health COVID test. Praise God, it's negative. Oh, they're still doing COVID test? I thought we're done and over with that whole thing, pandemic. I don't know why I completely forgot about it right now. And grounded, short circuit, no, not grounded, spark is electrical, <laughs> our rates are shocking, connected, Los Alamos. <laughs> We keep the lights on sometimes. Shockingly good-looking electricians. Thieves are us. <laughs> Lightning McQueen. Now that's funny. That is so funny. You deserve a laugh for this. <laughs> 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 
Lightning McQueen. ACDC. Oh, that's good. Every light in the house is blown. <laughs> Best power currently available. Lighting rods are us. Fainted electric bill costs so high you fainted. Volts and jolts. <laughs> Static. <laughs> now you see me, now you don't. Electric company. What's power got to do with it? <laughs> That's good. Gas prices are so high, even COVID quit traveling. <laughs> That's funny. I don't sanitize anymore since pandemic ended. Taste and con fuse box. Sparkies. Bail bonds electric. <laughs> high five. That's good. Edison severe surge. Electrifiers. Wire on fire. <laughs> Black out company. Shock and awe. <laughs> Electrified shocks. Liar, liar, pants on fire. Extra crispy. <laughs> How about well done? Shorties. Hair raising experience. Crack kills. <laughs> Better for plumber. Oh, yeah. Superhero power. Nuclear fusion is us. Unplugged. Hello, Dave. Hello, Frank. Deep fires. Hello, Brent. As the current arc urge to surge. <laughs> Good. Socialized electric company. Oh, snap, crackle, and pop. Electric slide. Currently high. <laughs> Blown fuse. Unlimited power. <laughs> Courtesy of Chancellor Palpatine. <laughs> Air fryer. Electrify electricity brought to you by the makers of the McDonald ice cream machine. Let's go fly a kite. Nuke bacon. <laughs> Hatfield McCoy power <laughs> feud. Arc de la Electrons. Rolling Kate Brown out <laughs> electric. Soaked electric company. Surprise electric. 1.21 gigawatt. 1.21 gigabyte. Jumping pacemakers. <laughs> Tesla. That's good. 18th century power. That's good. PG and E, please give everything. Fraudulent fuses. <laughs> you guys are so fast and good. Volt more. He who shall not be named. <laughs> Volt more. And grounded. This guy's going to die tomorrow when he comes to my house. I'm going to read him the top 20. Fred Ince. Tasers are us. Orange electric cord. Fires are us. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. I ain't hiring them. Fires are us. There is power in the blood. Grounded for life. Zap. The Undertaker Electric Company, Ungrounded. The Electric Eel Company, Electricity Powered by Electric Eels. To be or not to be connected. <laughs> Forever frazzled. I did the COVID-19. I'm on Cold and congestion and sore throat. Oh, I'm all shook up electric, undervolted, the plug bug. <laughs> Easy way to perm your hair. Dyslexic electric. <laughs> what does shock got to do with it? That is forever frazzled fuses. The rolling blackout. <laughs> hey, Rosetti. 
Give me what's the worst name for an electrical company? Pfizer Electric. <laughs> ben Franklin Key Power Company. Hall. Hello. <laughs> or hi, all. Hall. Hey, Timothy. Keep away from water. Wired. Underpowered and overcharged. Never on. <laughs> Shocking. Texas Electric Grid. Screaming electric company. Scream when you get shocked. Government Electric. Clap on, clap off. That's good. <laughs> That's really good. Just shocking. Clap on, clap on. <laughs> Electrifying. Shock jock. <laughs> Sparky's electrical repair only only works for two hours. High lines, high fines. Don't whiz on the electric. <laughs> Suzanne. Ben's Discount Electric. PGE&E. Amish Electric. <laughs> Lightning Starter. Lightning. Lightning Starters. All righty. All 90 people, come on. My little pony. <laughs> Are you guys giving up? Okay, let's give you another question. Death row chamber. <laughs> That's funny. Okay. Electric share, electric, shock, drop, and roll power company. I think you still have more in you. Towers are us. Death, okay. By the dawn's early light. <laughs> Electrical, good one. Hair razors, electric. The thunder twins. When nature's calling, don't be stalling. Use the common sense. When you've got to go, just let it flow, but don't whiz on the electric fence. <laughs> what a poet we have in here. <laughs> okay, generator pushers. X-rays. Just okay, electric company. Fauci's house of horrors. Blown transformers. Kevin's home alone electric. Flicker electric. <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> Flicker electric. Oh, that's funny. Dimmer, dimmers are us. Stolen electricity. Trimmer, <laughs> trimmers. The shakes. <laughs> right. Marsh Madras Electric Company. Decepticons, Twinkle Twinkle Electric, that's good, <laughs> Twinkle Twinkle Electric, Dimwits, <laughs> how about Dim Watts, get it, <laughs> Marvel Comics, that's funny, Flickers, Rawhide, it's not a blackout, it's mood lightning. Blown fuses electric, kilowatts. Blondies, power by the hour. <laughs> okay, it is time to hydrate and share people. Hydrate. All 90 people, please hydrate and share. And remember, tomorrow is our podcast. Jean Lupo, the manager of Daryl Strawberry, but also he is uh, he is uh, worked on Wall Street, and he used to work along the mafia. Just uh, one of those guys that you know from the Bronx. So we're gonna have fun tomorrow. So join us if you have any questions, anything you want to know. We'll talk about it. You know what I mean. You talk about it. He's going to be talking about it. 
So to, let's see, the quick flicker. So if you want to subscribe to our podcast, it's called Laughter for All Podcast, and it's tomorrow. So if you subscribe, which because we are in the top 49 in the country, in the world, with stand-up comedy podcasts. So we're not kidding. We're good. Not we. I mean, after two and a half years, it should not come as a surprise to you that we are on the top. So how do you get to subscribe? Just go to either iTunes or Spotify or any of that and just click, you know, just subscribe. Or if you want to, and I'm not making a commercial for me because I'm not paying myself for this, but you can go to this beautiful, uh, you know, a link and you can uh, subscribe. Shocking the shorts off you. Give him the Bronx cheer. Yeah. I have a car question. Why do we drive on parkways and park on drivers? Okay, Mark. The flux cap capacitor. Special prayer request for this date. 325.22 for me. We will at 9.23. Not, not, not September 23rd at 3.20, you know. I went on a mission trip to the Bronx back in my teenage years. Oh, wonderful. That's a mission trip right there. Power outages guaranteed electric. Ricky's burnt fingers electric. Hour of power. That's good. I was on the show. The Three Stooges Electrical Company. The Quicker Flicker Outer. Static Cling Electric. Shock blocked. <laughs> Stuck... Struck by lightning, laughing, <laughs> hamster wheel generators, dark ages. That's good. All right. Amy will be watching at 7, then at 9, lunchtime. Okay, we start at 6.30 for the f podcast, 8.30 for our show. Thank you, Rosetti. 88 miles per hour electric company, candle power. That's good. All right, guys, keep them coming. I th I'm glad I didn't stop. But 88 miles per hour electric company. I think I should give you another question. Go, go, Power Rangers, TPN. Okay, here we go. What's the worst place to take a nap? What's worst place? to take a nap. Okay, what's the Come on. What's the worst place to take a nap and pin it? On the rocks. Shock through the heart, but you're too late. You give electricians a bad name. All right, Bon Jovi. <laughs> What's the next question? Oh, TPN. On the rocks. What's the worst place to take a nap? A volcano. The subway. Church. <laughs> Rocket launch pad. A bit of nails. In the sun with no sunscreens. Niagara Falls, right? At your own wedding, that's right. Sunday school, front pew at church. In my dumb truck while driving down the highway. Oh, don't mix your negative and positive. Don't mix your negative and positive. Oh, for an electric company. <laughs> my own birthday <laughs> at Cole's Warehouse in the Pillow Pants. <laughs> Oh, that's right. They have pillow bins. You can... A public bathroom stall. On the ocean floor. Sermon rehearsal. On the tracks. A porter party at the job site. Oh, that's right. Sometimes that's all they have, Rochelle, huh? Poor thing. A rock concert. Adrift 
in the sea. Guys, let me give you some advice, just traveler's advice. I don't know if Rochelle has to do that when she's driving. I don't know if she goes from one place to another through the city. But whenever you're traveling or you're driving and you need to use a bathroom, don't stop at McDonald's or Taco Bell or something where you have to buy something or they give you a secret code. You have to get a passcode. You have to stop and ask. Find a hotel, any hotel, uh, a Marriott, a uh, Hilton, any nice hotel, you know, Fairfield, uh, whatever, and just go in the lobby and go to the bathroom. No one asks you what you're doing here. Nobody will say, no, you can't use it. And it's always cleaner than any restaurant you can go to. This is what I do. This is my advice to you. Okay. On the sun, in a hot tub, at the bowling alley, <laughs> at work, at work, and they caught me by the carts. <laughs> at your court date, at your own funeral, <laughs> they catch you sleeping. Your best friend's wedding, at Ikea, the labor and delivery room, <laughs> downtown New Orleans, you don't want to do that. On the freeway, your child's college graduation, <laughs> mother's dinner party. Behind the wheel, while riding a horse in the morgue, assault and batteries. Oh, that's a good name, assault and batteries for an electrical company. On the beach during high tide, at the fair, while doing brain surgery. I once fell asleep at school. I was in ninth grade, sitting in the back of the classroom. No joke, my teacher didn't notice. A frat house. A mustard factory. Practice building for firefighters training. On a road trip with untrustworthy people. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. This happened to me in Israel. While I was, we were going on the bus from one place to another and I fell asleep. And Chris Miller, who's the owner of Miller Mortuary, a very good friend of mine, he kind of, just tried to do something funny like stick his finger in my, up my nose or something and take a picture of it. But don't worry, I got him back. It wasn't a very good Christian thing when I got him back, so I can't be, I won't be talking about it. <laughs> but he loved it, I loved it, everybody on the bus, Inc. loved it. One of Naz's gigs, oh, you don't want to say, Motel 6 <laughs> You don't want to sleep at Motel 6. Driving in traffic and sleep at the wheel while sailing the seven seas during live with Naz. Oh, that would be bad, Michael Ramirez. In the lane at a bowling alley, yeah. In a divorce court, that would be. <laughs> at a red light lumberjack convention on the bank of the bayou. Back of a cruise ship if your room is over ship motors. In the middle of ordering Dunkin' Donuts. Cleaning the bob sledge on the Matterhorn ride. Oh, by the way, guys, what's her name? Stella was at my house Sunday. She stayed the night, and her dad and her grandpa were here. You met her grandpa, Yamo. That was my good friend that led me to Christ. But Stella's so cute. She's three years old. She's so cute. She was so excited to go to Disneyland. We went to the mall yesterday, and, you know, she was just so excited about life. Three-year-old, have tumors in her body, and just keep her in prayer. But she's really so cute and so happy. While skydiving, you don't want to fall asleep. Driver's head <laughs> during job interview. Starbucks drives you during the morning rush. Parachuting under a pigeon pass <laughs> among pranksters on a support beam at the high-rise construction site. While being read your rights. <laughs> Nap time at the beach and get burned. Yep. Behind your computer falling asleep on tools. On a plane with your mouth open. Yep. At a shooting range. At middle school. In a mosh pit. By a beehive. <laughs> oh no. What did you do Nance, to get back at him? Want to know? No you can't. <laughs> I, I won't. Never. In a coffin and a funeral home during the viewing. On a tour of the Holy Land with Naz. Right. 
on a platform at church. My friend did and fell out of a chair in front of everyone. Oh no, oh no. While on the witness stand in a courtroom, while your kids is telling you a, a long story, while having a good dream in the jail with a lot of jailers, oh no, at the red light. I'm not sure how that's possible on a roller coaster, yeah, while bungee jumping <laughs> against the gun wall in Seattle. You gotta be really tired to do these things. Oop, that was supposed to be plain. <laughs> Hold your hands together over your head and spell the word image and say light bulb. What? Hold your hands together over your head and spell the word image. I M A G light bulb. What? I M A G light. What is it? Did you spell the word image and say light bulb? I M A G light bulb. A GE light bulb, <laughs> I'm a GE light bulb. While operating on a patient at the dog park on a driving board while the boss is firing you. On a date at the movies, <laughs> started snoring. Oh no. In line waiting to pick up your kids at school, you wake up and all other parents are driving around your car looking to see if you're dead. During confession, <laughs> if you're a Catholic priest. <laughs> Oops, that was supposed to, I think I got it the first time, Sarah, in the plane. While watching Fert. <laughs> I'm a GE light bulb. Oh, I get it. While you work, sleepwalk on a lion hunt. Oh, no, on a safari. Okay, this is, I was working with uh, Greg uh, Smalley and his wife. Greg and uh, I think uh, Aaron Smalley. And they shared this such a funny story. You never want to fall asleep in that. They were in uh, in college at the university, and there were three hundred. It's uh, in the in the classroom. It's like a big uh, stadium seating. They had three hundred people, and the the professor. It's a Christian school university, and the professor was speaking, and Greg fell asleep and almost drooling, and Erin didn't know him at the time. She didn't know him, so it's just you know it's great. And she knew his name, so right when he's asleep, she goes. Greg, the professor wants you to pray. So Greg stands up and said, Lord Jesus, we thank you so much for today. Thank you for this class. <laughs> the professor looked at him going, uh, thank you, Greg, but we're, we're not ready for that yet. <laughs> and then they end up falling in love and getting married. In the trunk of a car, while sewing, water skiing, on a running forklift, snowboarding, during a job interview at a stop sign uh, in the trunk, while being waxing your hands or legs, that's where we go with that, uh, while giving yourself to the Lord in baptism. <laughs> Can you imagine you fall asleep in baptism? While praying at the prayer meeting, <laughs> that can happen. In the waiting room, at NASCAR, while trying on kilts <laughs> okay it's time for the guinness book of world record people guinness book of world record okay in sunday school i actually did that oh during bible study okay today is also na not only national nap day Today is also National Potato Chips Day. National Potato Chips Day. And the largest bag of potato chips was made by Corker's Crisp in the UK, in England, in Pymore, Cambridgeshire, in the UK, September 13, 2013. How much did that potato chips bag weigh? Over a thousand pounds, under five thousand pounds. Over a thousand, under five thousand. And while you're thinking of the three numbers, you're gonna guess. Drink some water. A 
and share the show, people. The largest bag of potato chips in the UK. How much did it weigh to make it to the Guinness Book of World Record? Over a thousand, under five thousand. It's called lay, lying before the Lord. Sure, one mile. Pirate ships. <laughs> That's a salty subject, right? A helicopter is looking for you, Nazareth. A helicopter? What does that mean? Because I made the GE light bulb? No. A helicopter? I don't get it, Amy. Standing out in center field waiting for the baseball, <laughs> right? While singing the national anthem. And try to stay awake while getting a massage. Oh, yeah, that's hard. At NASCAR. Is that my car or at the race? NASCAR. <laughs> During your own speech. Mid squat at a weightlifting competition. Oh no. I've d one mile. Let's see. What number? Here comes the numbers. 2228. 3338. And 4448 for Becky Ottenberry. Sarah Voss, 1500. 2500. And 3500. Lily, while waiting for your COVID vaccine. <laughs> I think I did it when they gave me the vaccine and they said you have to wait 15 minutes before you leave. <laughs> I fell asleep. 1321 for Amy. Why did I take the vaccine? Because we were going to see my nephew who had a, a heart transplant. That's why. Uh, Amy, Becky, 1095, 2539. And thirty nine seventy eight, Amy two thousand five, Dolores one thousand sixteen twenty one sixty four and forty five fifty four, Rochelle thirteen ninety seven twenty five ninety seven and thirty seven ninety seven, Suzanne Werder thirteen hundred forty eight hundred twenty two hundred, Chris Martell eleven 1, hundred thirteen twenty one and fourteen seventy six, Amy twenty three forty five, Ask Weight Watchers. <laughs> The Rooster Room, of course, they would love some potato chips if they're sour cream and onions. I don't know what brand was that, but it's British. 1234, 2345, and 3456 for Bobby Miller. Suzanne, I was born in a pirate ship. <laughs> don't say that while holding your tongue. A pirate ship. <laughs> Reading a chemistry book. <laughs> yeah, The police helicopter. Okay. Thank you, Amy, for the... Warning, 1426, 3359, and 2735, Lily. I wonder, Mike or Ramirez, what numbers do you have? 1573, 3377, and 2739. 2750, 3500, and 4250 for Pancho. Our Frank. Worst place to take a nap is on a weight scale. Michael Ramirez, 1426, 3359, and 27. 35, of course, back to his friend Lily. <laughs> <laughs> Laughing out loud over here, helicopters after a nap. <laughs> the worst time to take a nap before bedtime. Right, you're right. Um, I wonder why. Michael copied Lily. 1234, 2534, and 3895. Sold, ships happen. Stop it, <laughs> Sold. Anybody else? Anybody else really have to make a guess on the heaviest bag of chips that made it to the Guinness Book of World Record? It was in the UK and it weighed over a thousand, under five thousand pounds, and going once. Going twice and sold. Ladies and gentlemen, the correct answer is the largest bag potato chips weighed 2,515 pounds. And the winner is Sarah Voth. She came up with 2,500. Everybody else came close when they said 2,534 or 39. But, uh, you know, so Sarah can wait to congratulate herself, but I'm telling you, she's a winner, she won it, she gets to keep it, congratulations for her birthday, 
she won this beautiful toilet paper. All right. Happy birthday! I was going to send you a real gift, Sarah, but now that you won this, this is what you're going to get. Your own toilet paper. Yay, Sarah. You're standing on a weight scale that speaks, Timothy Fakhoury. That's the worst place to take a nap. In the UK, they call them crisps. Oh, I didn't know. Well, birthday, congratulations, yes. Happy toilet paper birthday. What? I want to... Yes, you won. You know, I really appreciate Sarah. She's always there, first one, ready to go. And just really welcomes everyone that comes in. So, and you guys, I know you guys do that too. And, uh, but you know, when someone new just checks in or wants to say something or want to to have their name going, hey, how are you? Just it just makes them get them into the show. They get involved. They go, oh, someone's asking, you know, saying hi to me. I need to respond. And slowly they found a welcoming community. It's not people who are mean or just want to say something mean. You know, this is 417 shows, people. Haven't seen a mean comment yet. There's no mean comments. There's no normal, like, social media comments and eh, backbiting and eh, I hate you, I'm mad at you. No, it's just all loving. And then, and in this next minute, you know, in a minute, we're going to be asking for prayer requests. And it's just our time to just glue this whole community together, praying for one another, and that's just awesome. Timothy Fakhouri, I just, okay, 22 people, I want you to know, I don't have a doorbell, but I have church bells. All right, all 90 people, all 90 people, if you have any prayer requests, please send it to us right now or tell us, you know, tell us we'll be praying for you, not on the show, not during the show, but we will take it to the Lord tonight, tomorrow, before the show, and you know you're prayed for. Uh, sure, I'll take the TP because Naz has already sent me broccoli before, so I guess I'll take that as a birthday gift. <laughs> All right, I hope you enjoyed the broccoli. They were different. They were dark broccoli, light broccoli, all broccoli. Sarah acknowledges everyone. It's so great. Happy late. No, it's today. Her birthday is today. Congrats, Sarah. Please keep praying for our leaders and nation. Yes, and first responders and all hospital staff and patients. Jesus' name. Demons will be destroyed and victory will be declared. <coughs> Excuse me. Ah. Sarah, I'm going to use some of your birthday present. Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. All right. Responders and hospitals. And amen. Full healing from head to toe. Amen. Night, Timothy. Amy called me a, Korea, a Karen once. She did? Oh, Amy. Please keep our friends. Remember, this is, I mean, I never had to warn anybody or to say don't do that. But you know what, guys? I love this community. So we're all friends here. We're all, maybe politically, we're not all on the same page, maybe. But uh, we're mostly spiritually, we're all on the same page. So that's good. But, you know, we're just, we're people that want to take a time every day to laugh together, to let everyone know. Hey, you're not alone. We care about you. If you feel depressed or if you feel lonely or if you feel anxious, just talk to us. And I see there's a there's a page, a group called Live with Naz group. So during the day or weekends, we're not here. You can connect with that group and just tell them what you need and they'll pray for you. Or if you need someone to talk to, they will respond to you. Keep our friend Scott Wood in prayer. His father passed away. Oh, I didn't know that. I would. Uh, you know what? Continue to pray for Gilbert Escoval. He went back a few times in the hospital. He called me like yesterday. And I'm like, I didn't know he went back. I thought he went once. Bobby and Crystal blocked me. 
Bobby and Crystal blocked me. Good night, everyone. See you next time. Well, I can't control that, Amy. I know I'm sorry because, you know, sometimes, you know, there's comment, you know, on the live with Nas stuff. Uh, I I can't f make anyone do anything, but I know on this f platform where we're live here, there's love going on here. Prayers, please, for my first church mission trip. Oh, this Saturday through Wednesday to a reservation in Globe, Arizona for a safe trip to carry out God. Amen, Lily. I'm so happy for you. We'll be praying for you throughout the trip and while you're gone from Saturday through next Wednesday. We'll be praying for you. They need it. Those reservations really need the Lord so bad. Okay, Naz, that is not a doorbell. Thanks for not confusing us with someone was at your doorbell. <laughs> Prayers. I appreciate Sarah so much. She takes care of Live with Naz family. Thank you, Sarah. Starting physical therapy. Yeah, on my left hand and wrist this Thursday. Praying for you, Bobby. Goodbye, Timothy. Unspoken for Sarah. It's about clean comedy. Yes. For Maggie Jo and her son's eye issues to be completely healed. We will. Nez, please pray for homeless man I saw at El Pollo Loco. He asked for money. I didn't have change, but I was able to give him a meal. Oh, God bless you, man. May God help this gentleman. We will. We will be praying for him. Sometimes, yes, we forget to be kind, but let's work out our issues and leave the past in the past. Amen. And spoken for Poncho's wife, we will. All righty. This is awesome, guys. Uh, you know what? Today I was reading John 14. Oh, what a, what a chapter. Go to read it. Go read it and be encouraged. Be encouraged by what the Lord is saying about those who love him. That, you know, if you love me, you know, the Father... And I will dwell in you. Me and the Father are one. I go to prepare a place for you. That where I go, you you will be with me. I mean, powerful, powerful promises from the Lord. About his love for us. About his Holy Spirit coming to, to, to help us. Just a powerful. If you're down today, or even if you're in a great mood. Go read John 14. Ah, I love it. More gigs for Nance. Yes, thank you. For Stella and all kids mentioned. Yes, yeah, Stella's at Disneyland today. She'll be there late. So keep her in prayer. She's so cute. She loves Nance. She, every day she asks her parents, I want to see Nazareth. Not, not Uncle Nazareth, not Mr. Nazareth. I want to see Nazareth. And she, her dad told me yesterday, he said, she wouldn't do that to anybody else. She's just come, sat in my lap, or sat next to me. I grab her hand. We're walking at the mall together. And he goes, her dad, he goes, she doesn't do that to people. So I don't know, some of this, this love that this little child have for me, I don't know where it comes from. I love her brother, Remy, as well. But she's, she's just special. So keep her in prayer. Hopefully the tumors don't grow. And she would be healed completely. All right. Love you guys. Thank you so much for a fun night. See you tomorrow twice. 6.30 p.m. And the podcast with John Lupo from Wall Street. Used to work for Finance Guru from Wall Street. And he's from the Bronx. So have fun with him. And also at 8.30 p.m. God willing, I see you on this show. Love you guys. Have a great night. And... We'll see you later. Good night. You will see me in person. God willing, Sarah. Good night, people.